A lot of religion is, is natural human thinking, what you might call the intellectual side of religion. Uh, where do we come from? Where are we going? Are we going anywhere? What was here before we were here? These are the kind of, kind of questions humans always ask. Um, and so they would come up with natural answers. They would guess. I guess there must be a superior power to this world that brought into existence because nothing can come from nothing. That kind of thing is, is kind of human thought. Um, and that goes on in religion. We call it the philosophy of religion. But the really big characters in religion are people we call prophets. And prophets are people who don't think about these questions. They claim to have experienced the answers in person. Um, they haven't actually wondered, is there another world? They claim to have encountered it, even to have entered it, to have seen into it, to have heard from it. Um, and I knew that they were at the root of the religions I knew about. And I wondered, are, are these kinds of characters everywhere throughout religion? And of course they are. So in a sense, the study of religion is the study of these remarkable people who look into the distance, who see visions, who hear voices, and they persuade others to believe in what they have heard and what they have seen. And each time uh, one of these prophets sees something new, in a sense, a new religion is formed. I'm actually very attracted to um, some of the traditional Chinese uh, religions. Um, I'm not a, a great religious scholar, but I'm very interested in, in the, the, the different ways people have asked the religious question. Um, and um, Confucianism <clears throat> is really more interested in how we act in this world. In a sense, it, it offers a kind of political philosophy and ethical philosophy. Um, be compassionate. You get a version of the golden rule in Confucianism. Uh, don't do to others what you wouldn't like them to do to you, or do unto others what you would like them to do unto you. And the thing I like about Chinese religion is that it's quite pragmatic, it's practical, it's about the best way of getting by. Um, I like Taoism as well, uh, partly because there's a lovely joyful jokiness about Taoism. It won't even tell you what it is. It says if you don't know what it is, then we're not going to tell you. And if you think you do know what it is, then you don't know what it is. I like that. And it's faintly anarchic. It doesn't like legalists. Legalists tend to take over religions. They tend to overemphasize law. We need law, but if you make law an absolute, it, it makes an ass of it. Inevitably, I suppose, uh, reading about world religions and writing about them, I come from a historically Christian perspective, um, although I've had my struggles with Christianity, um, uh, with, with uh, the Christian church. Um, inevitably, it's gone deep in me. Um, but I have tried to be as objective uh, as I could, as it were, to step back, uh, not to be imposing on the reader, um, uh, whether to believe in religion at all. Um, I spent uh, a bit of time offering different ways of reading um, uh, religious material. Um, but in writing the book, I realized that I get more and more partial to Jesus. Um, not necessarily the big supernatural, full Christian doctrinal understanding of Jesus, but Jesus is the prophet, Jesus the Jew. I like Jesus the Jew. Um, I like the way he tells stories. Um, I like the way he challenged authority. The old Hebrew prophets did that, um, and they got beaten up for it. Um, and Jesus, to me, is in that tradition. Um, and I spend a bit of time in the book um, very simply outlining. He, he challenged politics, he challenged law, and he challenged religion. And one of the interesting things to me about um, one of the kind of hidden streams in the book is the way if you radically believe in God, you profoundly mistrust religion. Because God's biggest rival is not politics, it's religion. Because religion or religious leaders or certain kinds of religious um, organization people claim 
virtually to be God, to have the mind of God, permanently to have sussed God. Ah, we've got God. This is what God is like. Um, and that's why the second commandment, uh, um, Moses brought the commandments down from the mountain, and the second commandment surprised them. Um, because it's, if, if you read it, it's very radical. It says uh, that you're not to make images of God. You're not to make human versions of God. Not just drawing or carving or sculpting or painting. It goes deeper than that. It's suggesting that even human ideas about God can be idols. Can, since they're not God, if you, if you treat them in an absolute way, you're treating them as God and they rebound on you. Um, and Jesus saw that, the prophets saw that, and one of the fascinating things about uh, a, a strain in Christianity, it's there in some 20th century theologians as well, um, that the biggest rival to God is not materialism, it's not capitalism, although it comes pretty close, um, it's not any kind of politics, it's religion itself.